Welcome back guys to another episode of Mark Customs Garage. Today we're going to be working on this here 22 Tundra. Um, we are going to be putting together once again a DIY catalytic converter protection plate shield. This go around we will be using my trusty tram gauge. So this here is what I wish I had used the last time I made one of these shields. Uh, this will allow for more accurate measurements uh, from points that we're going to find underneath this truck today. So let's crawl underneath this truck and uh, find our mounting locations. This location and this location will be the locations of our mounting points in the front. Um, there are these 10 millimeter uh, threaded areas right here and here. Now as far as com catalytic converter protection plate uh, protection, sure that would do, but at the same time uh, the owner of this vehicle does a lot of off-roading and I want to give him a, a, a more stout, stouter location for mounting this uh, shield. All right, so here we are in the rear cross member. This mounting location is right here and the other mounting location is right here. What is really important here is that you take this trusty tram bar that I was telling you about, you literally stick it through that hole and you'll go to the front and you'll go through that hole. You'll do the same thing with the other side. You'll take that cross measurement, write it down, and you also do a width measurement same thing with the front, width measurement, and then you'll do a length measurement. All right, guys, I'm gonna explain to you the best I can on uh, what we got going on here. So, here we have our straight edge. Our straight edge is going from the front, this is the front of the vehicle, and then this is the rear of the vehicle. Um, it's going from near the front mounting location and the rear mounting location. So I've already picked our spot where uh, we're gonna be mounting this. So what I've done is I've taken tape from the straight edge to the frame all the way and I've made it almost like a, uh, a cross hatch pattern. So I went this way and then also went that way. So what that does is that, uh, make, that allows the tape to uh, stay together when I get ready to take this off. So. As I was going, uh, putting the first layer down, I was uh, making sure that I was at least a quarter inch away from the frame. Um, that way it'll give me some, uh, you know, distance for when the, I do taper this up, when I do put a break on the actual material to lay up into the frame rail. So now that our soft stencil is completed, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out with a razor and we're going to transfer this stencil to uh, some cardboard and that will be our hard stencil and then we'll bring it back underneath here and fit it up and see what it looks like at an angle all right let's cut away So, so looking at this, once again, this is the rear and that's the front. I'm gonna put an arrow here to represent front. Right. Can you guess what side this represents? Correct. This is the front left, because it's just a mirror image of the side. So 
sitting this way, that is. That's the left, that's the right. So, now we're gonna make uh, some comparison measurements from underneath the vehicle, from where, the, for where these edges are, to, to the other side. And actually, you know what? Let's make two of these. I'm gonna make two of these. It's gonna install right here. You see how it's tucked inside the frame? Kind of following the contours there. I'm not sure if you can. Sorry about the lighting. I'm trying my best here. So yeah, you can see it right there. A little shadow, but anyhow, that's the passenger side. And if I swap this over to the other side, it'll look exactly the same. So this straight edge, I have it in the exact same spot on the driver side. All right, enough of me talking and confusing this crap out of you guys. Let me get up off the ground and uh, draw this all out on. Let's go. We are about to cut this uh, template with a hot knife. What I'm gonna be doing is using this hot tip right there. I don't know if you can see it. See if it'll focus. Not on my face, there you go. So, that's the knife we're gonna be cutting this, uh, this template with. So not only that, when I start melting this, um, it's going to start smoking a lot, and I'm gonna wear my respirator and also use the fume extractor. All right, let's get to it. All right guys, I hope you can see this. I've got the plexiglass up here held by double-sided tape. While it's underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Sharpie and mark a couple important areas where there might be uh, uh, places where you change out your diff fluid or your transmission fluid or anything that I can see that may need to be accessed. All right, let's do this. So check this out guys, this is freaking awesome. I was able to actually look at each area of the frame and note where there were certain holes and where I needed to add more material also. And also, check that out, that's where the, uh, the drain plug is for the, I believe it is the differential, or the transmission, actually transmission. So, check that out. So, this is where I assumed where the catalytic converter uh, vented at. Well, guess what? I was wrong. It's more over here. So, we'll have to make some adjustments in the CAD program. And then, up here, check that out. More mounting locations, or even just, just holes in general where, you know, it's just really nice to have more information and data that you can plug in into your CAD program. Things like this, that's where our bending radius will be when we put it on the sheet metal brake. So check that out. Just little things like, oh, add a little, add an inch here. Take off a, take off a quarter inch there. Just stuff like that. I just wanted to share that with you guys. That template took me every bit of 24 
almost 30 minutes to cut out. Is that a long time? Yes. Will it save me cost and materials and making prototypes? Absolutely. And you know what? That if, if that's what it takes right now, with what I've got, I don't have a 3D, you know, a 3D scanner or nothing like that. So I'm working with what I got. So this is a go for the in the future of prototyping and research and development of new products here at Mark Customs. Without further ado, I've got a sheet loaded. Let's go ahead and get it cut. Hey, that was so cool. So check it out. We got it cut. Now let's get it cleaned up. This is the moment where we pick our uh, angle of the wings on our catalytic converter protection plate. So I'm going to zero out this gauge here.
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with thirty. So I thought about welding these here, but instead I think I'm just going to just leave them free uh, just for movement, maybe just for adjustability. But this is a, I believe a one inch, yeah, one inch square tubing. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do here. And we're also gonna do it right, well, right under here. Boom. Let's get it on. Can you say catalytic converter protection plate? Catalytic converter protection plate. <laughs> yep. And how about tundra skid plates? Tundra skid plates. Yeah. <laughs>
hey guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and I hope you guys may have learned something um, on how to make your own cattle converter protection plate here in the future. Um, I have to give a special shout out to the owner of this vehicle, Dakota. I appreciate you, man. Uh, thank you for allowing me to borrow your rig and develop new products from our customs garage. As you can see, I am repping his nonprofit organization called Oscar Mike Overland. They are a nonprofit organization offering support to veterans, first responders, by means of adventure therapy and getting them on the move. If you'd like to go support or like to find out more about Oscar Mike Overland, you can go check them out on Facebook at their page called Oscar Mike Overland Community to check out their yearly event schedule. And as always, guys, thanks for coming by, checking out Mark Customs Garage. Stay humble, hustle harder. Peace.